Hey guys, I show a lot of wisdom teeth extraction videos, like over 500 on my YouTube and Instagram and stuff, you know, the step-by-step -step stuff on wisdom teeth. And I get a ton of questions on a lot of those cases. Like, did you get a, a CAT scan for that? Did you get a CT scan for that? And usually I don't, I don't, for me, I don't feel like it adds, like it's going to change the way I, I do the surgery. I just assume the nerve is going to be close. And there have been studies out there that said a Panorex film is generally good enough. The cone beam is not going to offer you more unless there's a clinical question. I do have a CAT scan in my office. It's not like I don't have any of that stuff available. It's just that I don't think clinically it would add a lot more to what I'm going to do anyways. So the question is, are, are people just overdoing CAT scans, maybe prescribing them or just you know, doing them and charging patients when they don't really need to, probably some of it, yeah. But again, this study in particular, it's called the Radiographic Predictors of Postoperative Inferior Alveolar Injury and Mandibular Third Molar Surgery. And this is from the January 2025 uh, uh, Journal of uh, Oral Maxillofacial Surgery. So, and the purpose of this study was to compare radiographic findings on Panorex versus cone beam CT and their association with a postoperative nerve injury or paresthesia. They're asking the question, is a Panorex good enough or does the cone beam CT add more value and does it reduce the incidence of post-operative paresthesia? And what they found is that it doesn't. The Panorex is fine. The CT doesn't really change anything. So that's interesting. The study was retrospective, meaning they looked back in time from 2016 to 2017 and it was over 12 months. It was at the Royal Dental Hospital of Melbourne in Australia and they had 257 patients, but about 386 wisdom teeth that they removed. Age, uh, the median age was about 25 years old, so a little bit older population too, which is generally a little bit higher risk normally. And so they compared the uh, Panorex to the cone beam and they found that the Panorex was, was just fine. The, the cone beam didn't add any value. Um, to minimize any par postoperative paresthesia risk. So other studies have been done on this. And again, they found that the CBCT doesn't add um, any value in the fact that paresthesia risk doesn't change. So the main thing that a lot of studies are going to say that operator experience is a big deal, right? So if you have a junior resident, a dental student taking it out, or an oral surgeon taking it out, you're going to get some different values there. That makes sense. In 2016, this put out the white paper. And at that time in, in 2016, they said that more research was needed on, on cone beams. And that makes sense. In 2019, the European guidelines said that CPCT um, didn't improve postoperative outcomes. So Panorex was, was just fine as well. So what did this study find? There's three main things that predictably have been found to increase the chance of postoperative paresthesia or nerve injury after wisdom teeth removal. Number one, darkening of the root. Number two, narrowing of the canal. And number three, diversion of the canal. So those three things have been found over time and also in this study that have the most effect on postoperative paresthesia. So if you're going to take a wisdom tooth out and you see the roots darker or the canals narrow or the canal changes direction a little bit, then those are riskier. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to say. I know there's other predictive things out there, but those are the, the big three. In this study of these uh, wisdom teeth that were removed, about 6% of the patients develop some sort of neurosensory deficit, um, whether it's permanent or transient. So 6%, that's still pretty high because if you read the literature, it could be 2% to you know, 6% or something like that. Uh, but 6% in this study is still pretty high. They think it's because they this study was designed with with patients in mind that have one predictive value of a little bit more difficulties. Maybe the in the case selection was, you know, a little bit more complex, but that's, that's what they found. And what they found was diversion of the canal is the most predictive in postoperative paresthesia. So what they found in this study was out of those three, that diversion of the canal. So if the canal changes course, the root of the tooth pushes down and you see on your film, a two-dimensional film, that the, the nerve moves a little bit around the root, that's the worst. You know, you have a higher chance of getting a post-op paresthesia in the study. And they attribute to that to possibly when the canal has to change course, maybe the top of the canal doesn't have that cortication or that denser cortical bone protecting it. Um, but that's what they found in this study. So good stuff. Hope you got something out of that, but I thought it was pretty interesting.